we are doing the Zoom training. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of information of where you can find this information once we are done with this training. So inside of Canyons U, you can access Canyons U by just searching for it. And inside of Canyons U, uh, I can click on it right here. And it will pull me into a button that tells me to access Canyons U. So once I've accessed Canyons U, I will have under the C's, notice there is a mini PD series here and a mini PD series here. I will have one for the district office that you guys can access at any time and watch the videos. But since this is Zoom, I will also be putting the information under the Z into the Zoom button. It's not currently active because the training's not done yet, but um, as soon as it gets done, all of that information and content will be added in there. So um, to get us started, I'm gonna exit out of those canyons view. And the documentation that we kind of will be following today is going to be um, this one right here that has been created by a couple of different ed techs, including Camille Cole and Katie Gephardt. And um, that documentation is being built and added to at all times as we are learning more about it. So we'll be going through a little bit of that information. We will also be going into um, talk about a little bit about our settings and defaults that we are looking at when we are looking at Zoom. So first things first, you'll want to go to zoom.us. When I go to zoom.us, if you have not logged in yet, you will see a login button on the right. Make sure that you use your canyonsdistrict.org email address and go ahead and log in with whatever password you set up. You should have received an email from Scott McCombs to help you set up that username and password. If you did not, you can go ahead and click on it, the login button and click on the forgot password and use that canyonsdistrict.org and they'll send you um, a way for you to reset that password. Once you get logged in, um, it usually stays logged in, and that's where that My Account that you're seeing on mine is showing up. So I can go to My Account, and now you'll be able to see a lot of the different features that happen inside of Zoom. So as for your um, as for your profile, there's not really a lot that you'll want to change here. Um, I did come here and change my personal link. So if you notice, my personal link is now set up to C Martz, which is my last name. So you can easily, if I needed to send that out to someone, they could easily have that personal link where they could go and sign in really easily and quickly. Um, <clears throat> things that you'll want to know are going to, and change are gonna be under those settings. In your settings, there are a ton of different settings that are able to be made in Zoom, which is one of the benefits of Zoom versus Google Meet. Okay, um, nowhere are we saying in Canyon School District that you have to change from Google Meet to Zoom. If you prefer Google Meet, you can still use that Google Meet. Well, I'm just gonna bounce this over here. Um, so in our settings, things that you may want to change, and I'm gonna look at my default settings here, just so I kind of have an idea of what needs to be changed. But things that you may want to change is number one, you wanna have a waiting room. That waiting room means that no one's gonna be able to enter without you accepting them in. And basically that helps save you a lot when the time comes that you're actually having meetings, um, it will save you from allowing people in that should not be in. Um, requiring a passcode when scheduling new meetings, that one should be turned on. Um, require passcode for instant meetings, I would make sure you turn that one on as well. And require a passcode for personal meetings, that PMI, I would turn that one on and make sure that you use the all meetings using the PMI. You can always change your passcode to be what you want it to be. So right here, I could change it to something like Marts and save that passcode. Okay, or I just canceled it, but you can save it. Okay, 
Um, I would require um, you to have a passcode for anyone that is joining by phone. Basically, what that's going to do is someone who is just like robo type calls where they're just calling and calling and calling, trying to get into these Zoom accounts, they will not be able to do it without that passcode. So it's just another uh, security protection. Okay, as we're going through, enable passcode um, for a link invite with a one click join. So basically, what that means is that when you are sending out your um, join code, if you send it out to someone and they click on it, they will not need that passcode just because um, you you actually gave them that link. So that's um, a nice feature. So you don't have to send out your username or the invite code and a code on top of that. All right. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I will um, add the setting defaults page that you guys can use at a later time if you need to. But when we look here, um, I would enable that personal meeting ID. I would make sure that you mute all participants when joining the meeting, because if someone joins in the middle of your meeting and their sound is off and they're talking to someone else, um, that could be very disruptive. Okay. Um, where we're working at the district office level, okay, um, the chat is um, allowing participants to be able to see that chat and have it visible. Um, I would have that turned on. Um, at the school level, this private chat where they're able to send messages to one another, I would turn that off. Maybe at the district level, it's okay to keep that on. Um, I don't know that they'd really be using it a lot, but hey, it's possible and um, it could be a good fe feature for the adults. Okay, um, sound notifications, I'll go ahead and turn that on so you know when people are coming and going from your meeting. You can have um, it play for everyone, but to me it's only important for your, your host, which is you, that is sent, or providing that training, providing that meeting. Um, as for polling, um, if you're working like with little kids, I'd probably turn that off because it's just another button for them to have to deal with. But you know, when you're getting to middle schools, high schools, and that you're at the district office, go ahead and um, leave that turned on. And so then maybe if you need quick feedback, this is a great way to do it is by creating a poll. Um, screen sharing, I would highly suggest that you have only the host can screen share. And if you decide you want somebody in your group to screen share later on, you can always turn that back on in the meeting settings that I can show you in just a little bit. Annotation, annotation, when you are sharing your screen, annotation means that you're able to write over the top of your screen. Um, so you can choose whether you wanna have that on or off. Remember the more stuff you have turned on, the more you're gonna see in your Google or in your uh, Zoom. And so it may be a little bit more complicated for you, but that it's okay. Um, it's whatever your preference is. Okay, um, a whiteboard allows you to actually write on a whiteboard. And so when you're sharing, um, that could be a, a good feature. Um, there may be other whiteboards out there like whiteboard.fi um, that might be better for you that have a little bit more option to it. Okay, um, you can allow feedback and reactions if you choose to. Um, those are two that I like to have turned on. And this breakout rooms is really good. Let's say you are holding a professional development for um, your faculty or staff, okay? Um, and you need them to communicate with each other. You could have, um, if you have like a group of 16, you could split them into rooms and um, pose a discussion question that when they break out into those rooms, they're able to talk to each other. Okay, um, the other one, not, it's not such a big deal. You can kind of choose, you've got your virtual backgrounds here, you've got filters, et cetera. So you can kind of look around with those at, and decide what you you want on those, okay? Um, other things that you wanna know when you scroll all the way back up to the top, so right now that we are in settings, okay? Know that um, one of the options was about recording, okay? If you decide that you want your meetings recorded, okay, um, you can come here to your recordings, okay, 
Um, and you can see which meetings you have had recorded, okay? Um, and then you would be able to share those out, et cetera. So you would be able to see that. Um, <clears throat> let's see, other things that you may want to know, okay? Um, up here in meetings is where you would actually schedule a meeting. So, so far, We've looked at settings, and that's just setting up the meeting, figuring out what you want to be visible to you during that meeting and how you want those default settings to show up, okay? But then once you've kind of done that, now you can um, create your meeting. So when you're creating meetings, you can come right over here to the right-hand side and you can click on schedule a meeting. When you schedule a meeting, you can type in what you want your meeting to be called. So maybe you want something, for example, like open office hours. And those open office hours are going to be from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. You can give more detail if you want to. Okay. Um, when this would be like a one and done type thing. So you're you're kind of setting it and saying, hey, at on this day from at nine o'clock, I'm setting my meeting. Um, if it's something that you want to have like open office hours every day from nine to 11, that's when you could come here instead of doing anything right here with the when and duration, you would change this to recurring meeting. When you do reoccurring meeting, you, it will ask you, do you want this to be daily, weekly, monthly? So maybe you have a monthly meeting with your faculty or your staff, okay? You could change that to a monthly meeting and you could go ahead and say um, when you want that to be done. One thing that I like, so it doesn't show up um, like 12 different times on your meetings, is I like to just do no fixed time. And if I do no fixed time, it could be that you're changing it up here to say when the meeting is going to occur like I did, okay? Um, so open office hours on Thursdays, um, nine to 11. So now I'm saying it here and then I can um, come here and just say no fixed time. So basically any time that somebody wants to get into that meeting with me, they would be able to click into it, okay? Um, so once you've done that, you can go back and decide if you wanna change any of those settings. Those settings that you um, created in your settings should move over to this section, um, but you may wanna check. Um, a couple other things that we didn't really talk about in the other section is video host, okay, the host video and the participants video. So. Basically, upon entering a meeting, do you want the host to have their video on and do you want participants to have their video on? As a host, I prefer to have it turned off and then when I'm ready to turn it on for people to see me, then I can go ahead and, and physically turn that on. Uh, but maybe as a host, you want your participants, as soon as they get into that meeting, you want to be able to see their faces. So you may automatically turn it on and then they can turn it off if they choose. It's all up to you how you want that set up. Anyway, um, notice that there are other options. Um, we talked about a little bit about breakout rooms earlier. So here is if you want to maybe pre-assign breakout rooms, per se, you know who exactly is coming to your meetings. You could do that breakout room pre-assign here and then um, type in those email addresses of those people and. Um, when you go to breakout rooms, it's not going to be random. It's our, you already have that in there. So anyway, um, once you have your meeting ready, you would go ahead and save it. So now here is my meeting. If I am working with my staff and I just need to send out that link, I can do that right here where it says copy invitation. Then when I copy that invitation, I could easily just copy my meeting invitation and paste it into an email and then send it to whoever I need to. Notice you have, they will see the Zoom meeting here, or if they need to call in, maybe on, on phone, they will be able to see that information here, okay? Uh, they could also type in the meeting ID 
or the passcode. Okay, so just different options of ways that they can do it. Once they're ready to start a meeting, or once you're ready to start a meeting, I should say, you would be able to come up here to the click Start This Meeting. When I click on Start This Meeting, it's going to ask me to open Zoom. So from here, I would be able to click and open Zoom. And now it's going to ask me if I want to join with my computer audio. So I can go ahead and say, yes, I want to do that. So now notice that my computer audio is here. Notice I'm not, um, I don't have my video started yet, but because I don't, I'm still able to see all of this information here. So for example, if I needed to quickly, because I left someone off the list of who I needed to meet with, okay, um, I could quickly copy that link and send it to them instead of trying to worry about getting that done. Okay, other things that you're going to see down at the bottom, okay, um, you'll be able to see how many participants are in your meeting. And if you um, had participants, you would be able to click on that. And over on the right hand side, you would be able to see all of the participants. Okay, um, you would also be able to see um, what they think. So um, if they needed, to, like, let's say they needed a break or something, they could post that they needed a break and you would be able to see that there. Or maybe they were on a break. Okay. Um, you can always come up here to that little um, carrot and close out of that so you're not seeing that. Okay. Um, other things are your chat. Your chat over here, you'd be able to say um, if this, like, if you're sending a message out, maybe you're sending a link out to someone, you'd be able to send it to everyone. Okay, or um, over on the right hand side, participants can chat with. So we already said um, earlier that they really couldn't chat with anyone, okay, which is probably set up to that, or you can change that to the host only, okay. Um, your other option is that everyone can chat. So you can decide how you want that to be set up. Um, other things, okay. Um, we remember we turned on polling. So polling is going to show up right here where you would be able to click and add a question in really quickly. Okay. Um, so once I got that question in, I would be able to launch my poll. All right. Let me go back to my Zoom. From here, I have, um, if I need to stop or pause my recording, if I stop it, it's going to be stopped here. If I just want to pause it, and I can pause it there. Just don't forget to start it back up again once you need to. Um, that's happened to me more than once where I forget that. All right. Right here is my breakout rooms. So when I click on breakout rooms, it's going to ask me if I had participants in here. It would ask me how many participants, and I could go up or down, or actually how many participants, and this is how many rooms I want to make. So maybe I had nine people and I wanted to put them into three rooms. I could do that there. If I want to do it automatically, I could do that there. If I wanted to do it manually, I could click on that and say create breakout rooms. And then I would be able to assign and it would just have a list of all of the people right here. I could say I want this person and this person and this person and then I would be able to assign it in. And I'd be able to do that with all of those. When I create that breakout room, and I um, push that out that everyone's been assigned, okay? Um, it will ask me for a time, like how many minutes do you want them to be in that breakout room? And you would be able to say how many minutes, et cetera. Um, and then it would also ask if you wanted to have a time for them to come back. So if it's like five minutes, it would give them like a, you could set it up for a 30 second countdown to get everyone back into the meeting, and then it would bring everyone back. So they're not actually getting lost in that other meeting because it will bring them back automatically. Okay, um, if I wanna share my screen, that's gonna be this green button right here. And when I do that, it will ask me, okay, if I hit the, the little carrot up, it will ask me who um, how I want to share, okay? Um, but if I just click straight here on the main screen share, share screen, okay, I will be able to pick which desktop I would like to use. Okay, so I have three going on right now, but which one I'd like to use. 
or right here is my whiteboard that I'd be able to click on my whiteboard. So from here, um, if I wanted to, I'm not going to because it's gonna um, take me off a screen share of Google Meet, but I could say that I want to um, use the desktop that I'm currently working on and click on that one, okay? And then when I click on my share button, I would be able to click on the share button and then it would pull up for my group, okay? As, as I'm sharing my, my people, okay, instead of them showing up here on my main screen like they normally would, okay, um, it's going to put a little box up on the top and I could choose here whether I want to have that pop out so I could still see my participants. And you could do that on a separate screen. So I could have um, up to 25 people showing on that other screen. Okay. As for how many people can be in a Zoom meeting at once, that is actually, um, for our account, I believe that is 300, which is quite a few um, for any type of meeting we would be holding, really. So um, those are the basics of Zoom. Um, are there any questions? And I'm going to stop this Zoom recording and leave. Okay, so I'm not really hearing any questions. So I'm going to end the PD for today. But like I said, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Um, I am at the district office on Mondays and Thursdays that I can support you. Um, and I am also um, available through chat, et cetera. So just let me know if you guys have questions. And have a great day.